Hello everyone, welcome back to another brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be covering Invincible Season 1, which I just finished watching for the first time. I had heard great things about Invincible when it first released, and with Season 2 coming around the corner, I heard the buzz once again, and I decided to finally check it out and I wasn't super impressed. Now, before you click off and leave a devious hate comment, let me explain myself. I didn't hate the show, and I just didn't enjoy it or find it as incredible as everyone says it is. As I continued watching, I just found it to be your standard run-of-the-mill superhero story, until episode 8 rolled around, and it blew me away and gave me a whole new perspective on the show. Before I go into my deep dive and talk through each episode, let me explain to you my color ranking system that I use. I find it easier for me personally to rate TV shows by a color grade rather than individually giving each episode a number score. When I talk about each episode, the episode title will come on screen in the color of what I rate it, and those ratings are as follows. Purple, legendary, absolute peak fiction, I love everything about it. Blue, fantastic, I love mostly everything about it. Cyan, above average, pretty good, has fun moments and you like a lot about it. Green, good, could be slow and have average moments, but you enjoyed it. Yellow, mid, probably slow or had moments you disliked, could just be boring. Orange, bad, I did not enjoy my time watching this. And lastly, red, hot, garbage, I hated watching this and I never want to watch it again. Alright, so without further ado, let's hop right into this with episode 1, It's About Time. So, this episode serves as our origin story for Mark becoming invincible, and we meet our characters for the first time. To me, this episode just felt really bland. I've heard that one of the show's best praises is that of its unpredictability and the breath of fresh air and twist it gives to the superhero genre, and I just can't agree. I can't really say that the show greatly subverted my expectations at any point, and I went into the show blind. We go over Mark's origin story in this episode, and I guess the unique part of this is that he doesn't really have an origin story. He just develops his powers one day, and that's that. After that happens in the episode, Mark just spends the rest of the episode either training or doing superhero stuff. This stuff just isn't interesting to me, and I will genuinely say that it's probably a me thing. The superhero genre has been pretty grating recently, and I'm sure a lot of you can agree with that. And with me watching during a time where everyone is experiencing the superhero genre burnout, maybe that affected my viewing experience. I think that Mark's conversation with his mom is pretty good, but the way it begins is so clunky. Mark is outside at night practicing his landings, and he's putting craters in the ground and making loud ass noises. I don't know how a single other person is noticing this, but okay. That's another thing about this show that gets me sometimes. Sometimes the animation will go from looking really well to really bad. Like, for example, look at this establishing shot that they use for the school. It looks like this multiverse that Brian and Stewie visit in Family Guy. It looks awful. However, I'm not going to shit on the animation for the rest of the video, because I'm sure they tried their best, and the whole state of animation is fucked anyways, with everyone getting overworked and underpaid right now. This episode ends with one of the most famous scenes in the show, Nolan versus the Justice League Light. And I really, really want to love this scene, but I just can't. Nolan starting off the fight with killing Red Rush is awesome, and it's made even more dark of a death when you think of his last conversation with his partner before this, where he talks about how his mind moves a mile a minute and small seconds are agony for him. However, when Red Rush's head gets popped, everyone in the room drops 100 IQ points. Now, for those of you that are going to defend the Guardians' hesitancy and them not fighting together on shock, I just think that's bullshit. These are all veteran superheroes that I would assume have seen some shit in their days, so them going into shock suddenly, I just don't buy it. Green Ghost's death in particular is outrageous. She stands there and just says, oh no, before she dies with zero effort to defend herself. Oh no. Then everyone else just stands around while Fishstick from Fortnite gets his head caved in, and this is the moment where the remaining three guardians decide now, after over half of the team is dead, that now would probably be a good time to work together and do combo attacks. But at this point, it's too late, and Nolan finishes killing the rest of them to end the episode. Here Goes Nothing is a really weird episode. In this episode, we see Mark's first big test as a superhero, and we end up meeting a lot of the other supers in the show, starting with Adam Eve, who I have major issues with. 
How the fuck does nobody recognize her throughout this whole show? Mark immediately recognizes her as his classmate as soon as he interacts with her as Adam Eve. She ends up saying later this episode that it's a psychology thing, but no, I call bullshit. This is absolutely not the same thing as Clark Kent and Superman's Disguise, which I've seen comparisons with. I mean, she goes by Eve, and her superhero name is Adam Eve. At least Clark wears glasses and has hunched-ass posture. I mean, shit, if it's like if Clark didn't wear glasses, and instead of his name being Superman, it was the Clarkinator. Like, it couldn't be more blatantly obvious. And to add another layer of what the fuckery, during the finale, Eve confesses to Amber and William that she's Adam Eve, and William confuses her with Duplicate. What? Oh my god, I see it now. You can make doubles of yourself. No! First of all, they don't even look remotely similar. And second of all, this is the same guy who recognized Masked Mark, but can't recognize Eve from Adam Eve. It's so stupid. Alright, rant over. Anyways, this episode begins with a weird scene that genuinely serves no purpose. We check back in with the dad guy that began the premiere, but that scene had purpose as it introduced the Mahler twins and the Guardians, whereas this scene literally does nothing. Please explain to me in the comments the purpose of the scene if I'm missing something here. The main conflict in this episode revolves around these aliens named the Flaxons invading, and at the end of the episode when Nolan goes through the portal and wrecks their entire planet, it's absolutely badass and definitely one of my favorite scenes of the show. However, this episode ends with Invincible meeting Alan the alien for the first time. The show establishes that Mark cannot breathe in space, and he even has to leave the battle for a brief time to go breathe. How do I breathe in space? That's the neat thing. You don't. However, they resolve their issues and begin talking, but they're still in fucking space! Mark goes to Mars later in the season, and he has to wear a space helmet. Why is he able to talk with Alan in space just casually like this? I mean, yeah, he's talking telepathically, but that doesn't change the fact that he's not breathing. Am I missing something here? Who you calling ugly is an absolute snooze fest. For my talking points for this episode, all I wrote down was boring. Because my god, this episode is so bleh. It's not bad, like I don't actively dislike anything that's happening, but I'm not enjoying myself either. So in this episode, we see Robot assemble the heroes to make a new Guardians of the Globe roster, and we see even Mark take down some bum at Mount Rushmore, and that's about it. We get some progressment with Mark and Amber's relationship, but that subplot is just atrocious. The superhero balancing his life with his love interest is a trope that is so worn out, and this show does nothing special with it, so it's just a chore to sit through. Neil Armstrong, Eat Your Heart Out, is easily the worst episode of the season for me. Not only is it once again a chore to get through, it actively does not make a lot of sense. First of all, this opening is confusing as fuck. I don't know if I'm stupid or had severe brain rot when watching this part of the show, but I did not get the joke of Invincible accidentally stopping this villain until I looked it up. Anyways, we also get this goofy-ass Nolan and Darkblood conversation that ends with this line. Go fuck yourself, Darkblood. It's stuff like this that makes me think the show is trying to be edgy and it just comes off as annoying. Anyways, now to the truly awful stuff in my eyes. We get this conversation with Nolan and Debbie when all of a sudden a dragon pops up in the background and starts attacking Rome. Nolan makes sure to finish the conversation, which is believable for his character at this point. But then Debbie rightfully asks him to go stop the dragon now that their talk is done, and he says, no, I'm on vacation. And we just cut away after that. How would Debbie not have an issue with that at all? The answer is that she absolutely would have an issue with it and the show cut away because the scene doesn't make sense. Then, the absolute biggest sin of the episode. This is the episode where Mark shadows the astronauts to Mars and makes sure they don't run into any issues. Well, they get kidnapped by the Martians, and Mark goes to rescue them, and we get this standoff scene. Mark and the astronauts are completely surrounded, and you wonder how they can get out of this situation. Well, the show cuts to black, and then cuts back, and they're running back to the ship. Sorry, but... WHAT?! How the fuck did Mark get all four of these astronauts out of the room they were in, surrounded by Martians, through the hallway of facehuggers, and this far away from the pursuing Martians while on foot? 
yeah, the astronauts are all on foot here, and then Mark just picks them all up and puts them in the ship anyway, so why the fuck were they running on foot in the first place? This entire scene makes zero sense, and the show itself couldn't figure out a way out of the situation for the characters, so they just cut to black. This episode just is not that good. That Actually Hurt is a decent episode. However, it starts on a ridiculous note. We see Titan roll through these criminals, and before he kills one, they say this. The fuck? <sighs> yeah, this show is a comedy at this point, I don't even know. Another weird issue is in this episode, we see Mark quit his job, which begs the question, he still had a job because he has high school and being a superhero to worry about and he still had his job at this point. I mean, in the last episode, he took a two week journey to Mars. So this all just doesn't make a lot of sense. However, I do like the rest of the episode for the most part. Mark teaming up with Titan to take down Machine Head is fun. And the fight scene in this episode is an absolute banger. The new Guardians have to get involved because Mark gets rolled, and Battle Beast wrecks Samson and Monster Girl in brutal ass scenes. He then up and leaves since the Guardians are so beneath him in competition level, which is convenient, but hey, I don't really care at this point, and I'm excited to see Battle Beast come back and fight Mark at a later point in the show. You Look Kinda Dead is another bad episode in my eyes. So we see Mark, Amber, and William travel to Upstate College for a fun weekend. During study hall, we meet this guy named Sinclair, and he kind of looks like, uh, oh god, he looks like Kimberly. oh god. Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! Anyways, he's the main villain of the episode, and he creates these murder bots by capturing actual humans and implementing them with his tech. His first victim is Justin Roiland, so maybe this guy isn't all that bad. Murderbot Morty attacks the college during the day, and Mark has to dip out to stop him, and this is when William recognizes Mark for the first time. After Mark ends up saving the day, Amber chastises him, obviously not realizing he's invincible, so she thinks he just ran off and left them to die, which is valid. Except that in the next episode, when Mark tells Amber he's invincible, she says she's known for weeks now, which then begs the question, why the fuck was she mad at him for leaving when she knew he was invincible? If he didn't leave and just stayed and helped as Mark, William would have died. This is just a blatant plot hole, and if it isn't, then Amber just absolutely sucks as a person, and there's no in-between here. Anyways, William's crush Rick gets taken by Sinclair to get turned into a murder bot. This happens while Rick and William are on the phone, and William tries to get Mark to go check on Rick, but he doesn't since he's trying to get Amber back, and at this point, both of these people suck. Amber for being mad at Mark for literally saving people, and Mark for not helping check on Rick. They both indirectly lead to Rick getting turned into a murder bot. William himself goes to check on Rick and gets captured, and Mark goes and ends up saving the day, with Rick being taken by the government to be hopefully returned to normal. This episode is just a hot mess. We Need to Talk is a good episode. However, before we talk about the great stuff with Nolan and Mark, there's been a whole subplot I failed to mention this entire video. That of the Robot and the Mahler Twins subplot. So this entire time, Robot has hired the Mahler Twins to help him make a clone body. And in this episode, we learn the full scope of his plan. So let me explain the implications of this entire subplot. Robot is a drone, and he's being controlled by this thing. Monster Girl is a superhero with a curse, that being that every time she transforms, she gets younger. So she looks like a 12-year-old girl, but in reality, she's in her 20s. So, Robot gets the Mahler twins to make him a new clone body because he has a crush on Monster Girl. The clone body is made from DNA from fellow teammate Rexplode, so Robot's new body is basically a teen Rexplode. So Robot has a crush on Monster Girl, which is weird in and of itself because of her looks, even though technically legal, then he steals the DNA of his teammate Rex since he thought Monster Girl liked him, and his new clone body is a teenage Rex. There's so many layers of fucked up here, so let's just move on. We see Cecil's desperate attempts to stop Nolan's rampage as he heads for Mark. Immortal gets resurrected and he jumps. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was the implication there that Immortal was this universe's Abraham Lincoln? Why add that detail there? Genuinely, why? Anyways, Immortal finds Nolan and then gets rolled once again to end the episode.
Where I Really Come From is incredible television. Yeah, I've been ragging on this show a ton throughout this video, and I was in real time on my watch through of this, but when I hit this episode, that came to a screeching halt. I think this battle between Mark and Nolan is one of the best comic book fights I've ever seen. Yeah, it's not a competitive fight in the slightest, but that's not really the point of the fight. What makes this fight so good is the clash between Nolan and Mark's mentality about Earth. Nolan continuously throughout the battle kills innocent people trying to prove to Mark that the humans are meaningless. He even calls Mark's mother a pet and this is what begins the fight. Mark's life up until this point has been a giant lie. His father never really loved his mom and was grooming Mark to conquer the earth this entire time. This entire fight is filled with so many incredible moments. Mark has to save this fighter pilot after Nolan destroys his jet, and after Mark saves him, Nolan just kills him anyway, and we get this great interaction. Killed him! Now or in 50 years when he's old, what difference does it make? What difference? He'd have a life! Mark tries to save a mother and daughter from a collapsing building, but fails. Then, we get the iconic train scene, which is the highlight of this fight. It's absolutely horrifying. The fight wraps up when Nolan has Mark on the verge of death. He explains once again that Mark will outlive every single human on Earth as Viltrumites live for thousands of years, and he asks Mark the question, what will you have after 500 years? And Mark responds with the most powerful line of the show. Are you that? I still have you. And that's how we wrap up this battle. Nolan flies away with tears in his eyes, and one of the greatest comic book fights comes to an end. Obviously, there's still like 20 minutes of episode left, and it's fine television, but it doesn't even come close to what we just witnessed. The season ends with Mark talking to Alan, once again without a helmet, and why does Mark's costume have ear holes? That was season one of Invincible. As I was watching through the show and not enjoying it as much as everybody else, I thought to myself, is watching this show even worth it? I haven't liked like half of the episodes, so watching this show might just be a giant waste of time. And then I finished the show, and I asked myself the same question. Was it all worth it? I mean, I only think two of the episodes of the show were genuinely good and enjoyable, and they were the last two. Was watching that six episode slog worth it for the payoff in episode eight? And the answer to that is yes. Even though I was having a bad time, I powered through and I got rewarded with one of the greatest comic book fights on screen. Yes, the setup to it was kind of boring or bogged down with shitty subplots, but in the end, it didn't end up mattering. The setup to the fight was necessary and the fight was better for it. So that's how I feel about Invincible Season 1. I think it's extremely overrated as a show, but it was worth the watch for Episode 8 alone. And with 40 minute episodes, it's a rarity for me to say something like that. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my review of Invincible Season 1. If you want to see me cover Season 2, let me know in the comments. If you enjoy content like this and you want to see more, drop a like and subscribe. Thank you guys all for watching, and have a wonderful day.